Welcome back to The New Normal with Natasha. And can you believe it? We're entering into the third month of the coronavirus pandemic here in Canada. And a lot of us have had to reevaluate and reorganize our lives professionally and personally. But I know one inventor who actually had the coronavirus and decided that he was gonna invent something that could save lives. How is it in Toronto these days? It's fantastic. It's, uh, it's very calm, uh, unlike Toronto usually. Uh, so it's good. Life is good. It's so good to see you healthy and safe. Look, you've been inventing a lot of things for a couple of years, but this time you're inventing something that's a matter of life and death, and that's ventilators. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Well, uh, I was very lucky in that I got COVID-19 really early on uh, in the, uh, during the pandemic. Uh, I didn't get it very hard, like I was just uh, sleeping a lot and had some fever and some difficulties breathing, but I was thinking if somebody has uh, a complete occlusion of the lungs that like they're talking about, you know, the lungs become rigid, we have to have a solution for that. And on the market at that time, most of the products were about thirty-five dollars to $40,000 to build a ventilator and it took quite a few months to get it ready. So I was thinking, how do we build something? which will work not only for us here in Canada, but also in the third world as well. Do you have the ventilator with you? Can we yeah, see I do. it? I do. It's in uh, two parts right now, so I'm going to make sure it doesn't fall off as I, as I show it to you. There it is. So it is this beautiful device. And uh, you kind of fall in love with the aesthetics of it after a while, it's when, you, when you obsess too much over, over that device. But basically, this is the bag that ambulances use to be able to make a patient breathe. And this bag is available in every single hospital. They have plenty of them. And most of the issues that people have when they want to build a ventilator is, how do they keep the air sterile? So there's a bunch of models that came in the market that try to reinvent everything. And the way we thought about it is, how do we build something which uses what people already have? but also uses things you can find at the local hardware store. Wow, so now that you've invented these ventilators, how are you gonna get them out to the people who need them? We are doing a, uh, a, um, a crowdfunding campaign where we'll ask people to donate and we will uh, manufacture those ventilators for uh, the hospital of the, of, of that they request. Uh, and we'll also send some to people who are in need of them. But the way we're gonna make ourselves known is to do a lot of media outreach and ask people to come and, and visit us on airwayrescue.org. So what are we looking at in terms of cost for this compared to a traditional ventilator? Well, we know that a traditional ventilator is now anywhere between $35,000 and $50,000 to build one. With the new uh, industrial um, obligations that governments are bringing, the cost has, can go down as little as $12,500 US to build one of them. Um, if you 3D print this one uh, directly and you build the components from things you would find at a hardware store, um, it's 50 bucks. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that and makes no sense. Be... <laughs> I know. Now that you've invented these ventilators and it seems that ventilators are in desperate need, is this the new normal of, of emergency medicine? It does something which is very interesting because it opened up the minds of a very conservative profession, the, uh, the medical field, uh, to accept that the community can bring up interesting new ideas and they don't need to come from huge corporations. You know, if we work together and we listen to uh, their needs and, uh, and how they want to use and operate uh, with those devices, that we can build something which actually meets their needs as well as any big company. So I think it's gonna be an interesting uh, revolution within the healthcare sector. Um, for example, uh, this device, when you install the software, all the devices can be monitored from the nurse's station. We, you know, using wireless uh, communications. That's part of the 50 bucks to build this thing, you know? And uh, they can see the whole list of patients and have, uh, know immediately who's having some difficulties, you know, who has stopped breathing, uh, if there is a power loss, who's, who's affected by it, and it can go straight to that. If you wanted to integrate those kinds of technologies within the hospitals before, it would take years and years and years to do. And now this can be done basically overnight. So what can we do to help? How can the public get involved? Uh, send people to airwayrescue.org and Indiegogo. 
Uh, that's going to be uh, our, uh, our main way to, uh, to transform this into something which is directly useful to people on a daily basis and will help us save lives as well. You are setting the bar very high, my friend. Thank you, Louis Eric, and to the entire team at the Airway Rescue. You guys are doing some pretty incredible stuff. That's what the new normal with Natasha is all about. We're putting a spotlight on people who are doing some pretty amazing things during quarantine. We'll see you next time.